Hello again, it's me, making a couple of pens. Um, that's a pencil mark, but uh, most of you guys are kind of interested in the segmented pen. So this is about, uh, I don't know, 15-20% of the way through the process. Um, bird's eye maple, centerpiece is cherry. Bird's eye maple, the black pencil mark helps me find a uh, center so I know where to overlay the 45 degree cut. Red dyed box elder. Uh, I'm going to try something a little bit new, or slightly new anyway. I'm going to chop this side off and put a blue piece over here and then top it with Afzilla. I think it's kind of cool looking. Uh, got three of these. Um, I had one that uh, I got impatient and uh, the epoxy was getting a little too stiff and I had a seam in it. Here's one I'm thinking about turning into a uh, Mach 3 razor shaver thing. Pine, well, let me get in the camera here, pine, cherry, pine, red dyed box elder. If you look right in the corner there, there's blue, and then the ends are capped with uh, Afzilla. We'll see how it turns out. Anyway, uh, I appreciate all the wonderful comments you guys have left. Thank you. And... Um, if I don't get a chance to make another video, I'm going away for nine months, not to prison. Uh, job or work's taking me away, so uh, I'll be back if you're curious as to when I'm making these. And uh, yeah, comments, tips, criticisms, I'll take them all. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. Anyway, best of luck to the rest of you guys doing this. Okay, doke, here's another one. What I've just done is... Uh, I 45 off this side. I do one side at a time because I apply glue, clamp it, and overhang it a little bit, and then I can 45 off. Wow, I'm not even in the camera. Sorry, fellas and ladies. Um, I do one side at a time, so I 45 the block, put the wood piece on, and then cut this side off, and it gets rid of the glue residue and gives me a clean surface to uh, stick to. So once again, when it's square, this uh, bird's eye is square. I 45 one side, glue block, I'll have glue on this side or up the stem basically and then I take it once it's dried and chop this side off, do it all over again. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a fatal flaw I made. Um, I never should have glued these two on here together uh, like that. I should have glued them to my 45 blocks. Here's an extra. Howdy again. Um, I made a fatal mistake I'm going to share with you guys that I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fix. You remember I glued these little slivers onto here like this. A red one here and a blue one here. I had forgotten that I'd learned a lesson not to do that. And what I do is I take this 45 degree block. If you've watched my former videos, you know what I'm talking about. I should have glued this piece right here to this block and then put it to here. And the reason why is because when I glued this one on and then this one on, I still have to trim this again back down, but this piece is so tiny that um, I can nick it on a, on a saw. So I'm gonna try to sand it, but the problem with sanding is keeping everything flush. Very, very hard to do. So I uh, might have just wasted several hours. Uh, I'm gonna give it a try and try to fix these, but, um, and I'll show you where the problem lies again. So now I'm gonna glue this one to here and I'm gonna to have to trim, let me hold this correctly, I'm gonna to have to trim this back down flush to this. But this thing's less than a tenth of an inch wide. Um, so I'm not, I'm not real sure how I'm gonna be able to pull this off, but I know it sounds easy, but uh, it's, it's quite difficult to keep everything square and flush and perfect so when you turn out the pen, there's no gaps. Okay, here's a little bit better explanation of my mistake. Uh, formerly I told you what I was going to do and kind of how I screwed it up. But if I was to have glued these two pieces together first, so I had two for each one of these blocks, one for here and one for here, um, what I could have done instead of sticking this on here is I would have glued this piece to here and let it stick out 
lengthways over the 45 degree angle. Um, when I first did this, and I didn't show it on the camera, I only had one 45 degree cut. And I, if I would have remembered to do this portion correctly, I would have laid this on here. I'd, I would have had a center line and a piece of wood. That way, all I had to do was take it to the chop saw, like this, and cut it at a 45 degree angle, and I would have had a perfect line through both blocks of wood. But instead, I didn't do that, and now I have to contend with uh, glue residue, this sticking over, this uh, blue shim in here sticking over, um, and I'm going to have to probably sand this down by hand. Uh, and the hardest part's going to be not taking this down at all, but getting rid of all of this debris so I can glue this block on here. And then I'm going to have to turn it over and trim it again from the other side. Um, hope that makes sense. Okay, uh, glued all the pieces together. Um, this is roughly what it looks like. So you remember bird's eye, cherry. There's a little piece of blue in there. Little piece of red. 45 to Afzilla on top of that. And um, red and yellow dyed. I already forgot the name, sorry. So what I'm going to do is kind of shave it down and look for the geometry points on either side so I can start drawing marks so I know where to drill through the center. The reason why there's a number two on here, uh, I made a mistake a, a while ago, and um, I make these in kind of like bulk. Here's one, here's another one, here's another one. It's just easier to, if you're going to make three, do them all at the same time because all your parts are out, all your glue's out sort of thing. But if you look at this Afzilla up here, um, when you cut, if I'm doing three of these, I need two, four, six of them. So you can potentially have to take six 45 degree cuts out of two different pieces of wood to get the material you need. Um, and I learned the hard way that uh, if you get it from a different piece of material that's from a different tree, it looks completely different. So if you look right here in the corner, it says number two. So when I cut uh, two 45 degree slots out. I mark them two, two, and two, and stick it to number two. And because lo and behold, when you're sitting at your workbench or whatever, and you got all the parts laying out with your clamps, and you're getting ready to mix glue, um, they tend to get mixed up. And it, it was a really funny looking pen to have two different sections of tree or two different completely different trees of Afzilla on either side of this, and it didn't really look very good. So, um, yeah, another mistake. What I'm going to do is sand this down so I can find my geometry points and. I'll be back. Okay, what I've done is sanded it down so I can find the geometry. So if you look in this, there's a red piece and a blue piece. I'm looking for the very tip of it. I did it on both sides. Now if you recall from one of my former videos, when I laminated bird's eye maple, bird's eye maple, to this piece of cherry, the reason why I left this stuck out is so when I put it in my vise, um, my vise has a little V, um, a v cutout, basically, kind of looks like this. So picture a pair of jaws like that, and I stick this in the jaw. That allows it to stay completely vertical this way, and vertical this way. Now what I'm going to do is draw lines up the top, make them intersect, so I know whereabouts left and right here to punch the drill through. So. My main goal is to get down the center of this because that'll be saw, or you can see that on the pen first. So if the drill hole goes down the side, you're going to have to laminate closer to one side. This is going to be thicker because the object's round. Um, it's very, very difficult for me to do. I haven't found an easy way to do it yet. Um, I've been lucky about 80% of the time. Other times I, it's slightly cocked off to the side, but let me squirt this with some alcohol so you can see it a little bit better. There's the uh, blue side. It's kind of a bad description of the red side. Let me do it again. There we go. But now you can see the point I'm looking at. So, wish me luck. All right. Uh, drew a center line through the apex, up through the top block, through the center of the apex, through the top block. Shoot, I'm hoping I'm getting this in the camera here. Sorry, fellas. 
and ladies. And then I ran, I held a ruler up against the side of this, drew a line across it, and then up against the other side and drew a line across it. Don't know if you can really see it, but I drew a line bisecting the two, bisecting the two, and that gives me my drill point. Um, pain in the butt to do, really tough. Anyway, more to come. Howdy again. Um, here's that piece I showed you real quick, just kind of making videos for the hell of it. Uh, upper and lower barrels. Broad Nuva scepter pen. Hope I'm saying that right. I'm going to stick this on the laser and uh, hopefully put a flag right here. Um, it's a pretty small surface area to work with. If you remember in the video too, I talked about uh, labeling your woods so it comes from the same stick in the same place. Notice how this one doesn't match this one. Uh, I screwed up and I cut a bunch of these out and I didn't label them or keep track. So anyway, I'm gonna try to put a, a flag right here. It's a really small area. Most of you guys seem to be interested in my laser, so I'm going to video that one. Okie doke, there's my wood piece centered uh, program for diameter. And um, I'm going to give it a zapping. I had to make the flag a little bit smaller than the razor, so I'm not even sure if this is going to work. These are the parts that make me really, really nervous because once I hit it with this machine, um, if it's screwed up, the work is gone and uh, hours and hours wasted. So uh, it's going to get a little noisy. I got to apply the air. So, um, air, vacuum, and water to make this machine run correctly. So, here goes nothing. All right, what I am noticing visually looking down through the top of this thing is uh, the cuts aren't deep enough. So what I'm gonna do is uh, cycle this one last time when it's done. And uh, I'll let you guys watch. I know you're getting a kick out of it or whatever. The power setting, to give you an idea, I have a CO2 laser, uh, 60 watts, which is kind of up there. It's Chinese made, so I'm probably only getting about 50 or something, but. Uh, I am running 8% and my speed is 100 millimeters per second, I think. Second or minute, something like that. Um, I'm not totally wrapped around, I don't totally comprehend all the metric crap that comes in the software uh, that's a Chinese laser. Uh, to put it bluntly, um, laser is about six grand. And uh, to buy an American one that has all the English software compatible uh, stuff is about twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and uh, I really couldn't afford it. But looking at it visually, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna do it one more time. Bear with me just a second. All right, we're gonna zap it again because I want good deep grooves. And uh, that allows me a little bit of sanding room and uh, a little bit of wiggle room as far as uh, how much material I can take back off. 
we'll see how this works out. Hopefully it'll be okay. Not 100% sold. On this second run behind the camera, you didn't see me do it. I changed my scan gap to 0 0.05. The original setting was 0.1. I didn't catch it before I hit start, so uh, it's going to take twice as long. For those of you wondering, uh, scan gap is, as it's rotating, it's rotating towards the camera, is um, the space in between each time it cycles left to right. So it'll cycle left and right, left and right, and it's how far it moves the workpiece before it zaps it again with the laser. Uh, the closer in the scan gap, in other words, if it was 0.1, it moves 0.1 of a millimeter, I got it. I turned it back down to 0 .05, uh, so it's taken off a lot more material, a lot more accurately. Um, wood, it's not necessarily that that important because uh, the fibers in the wood burn regardless. You end up with some inaccuracies just due to the fact it's wood. Uh, grain, sap, glue, uh, space between the grains. Uh, I've stuck in. Same settings, two different types of wood, and one's turned out beautiful and the other one's turned out like crap, so. Uh, using a laser on wood is just a kind of a gamble. Um, I'm getting the hang of it, but anyway, a lot of you seem fascinated with this thing, so I'll try to get a top shot for you. That's my air compressor. The red dot you see is nothing more than a pointing device. And that's all she wrote. Here comes the inlay process, little thing of powder. Not sure if I'm supposed to advertise for a company, but screw it. And all I do is put the powder on, then I just kind of press it in. Taping this off is a, a royal pain in the butt. I put a, um, a newspaper magazine below the mandrel here to collect up all my stuff so I can get it back. Um, because I kind of press it in, a lot of it rubs out. But you get the general idea. All right, uh, here's roughed in part. Get a better view. Come on, camera focus. There we go. Um, it's just sanded down. I pulled the tape off. Uh, and yes, some of you might have caught this as I was doing it, but uh, I inlaid the wrong color. Uh, blue does not go on the stripes of the flag. I'm not going to proceed any further. Um, 
it's a, just a personal thing. Um, don't really care if you, I really don't care if you leave comments or not, but uh, I am not going to make an American flag with inverted colors. Uh, a lot of folks have died for that flag and those colors. So uh, I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to trash the part. Another pen, me just kind of messing around with some woods. This time I put an American flag in it. All sorts of different woods. Just messing around. Let me know what you think.